This is a presentation of Transportation in the Middle Ages by Chandu Khomeini, Ryan McCarthy, and Leo Mount. The Middle Ages span from the 5th century to the 15th century. This is a large span of time and would be too great to cover in just one presentation. This presentation will focus mainly on Europe and China to compare significant events, technology, and legislation. This allows for more specific and informative information. For surface transportation, horseback was most common. Horseback could be used on either paved or unpaved roads. Covered wagons were used for passenger travel, and the cover on the wagons was used for the aid and the comfort for the long travels that the passengers would normally go through. Trains of horses were used for cargo, and this allowed for large amounts of cargo to be transported with minimal cost. For marine transportation, Many different types of ships were used, which were utilized for cargo transportation, passenger transportation, and military uses. These ships included Nar and Hulk, which were used for cargo, the Trade Cog and Galley ships, which were used for cargo and military, and the Caravel and Carrick, which were used for just mainly passenger travel. Now we get to Leonardo da Vinci's transportation inventions. Leonardo da Vinci was a great mastermind of engineering and he designed many things which were mainly used for transportation with military. One of the things non-military that he did design, however, was a bicycle, where power was converted from one place to another via a chain. This is still used today for modern bikes. He also designed a differential to equalize the speed between wheels when turning. This is used today in all modern vehicles. For military use, he however made an armored car which was equal to a tank for war machines and included armor, light cannons being able to rotate 360 degrees. It was surrounded by a conical cover with a sighting turret in the center. Two cranks were used to set the machine in motion. Hi, I am Chen. Now going ahead to the significant events of the Middle Ages, China left its own mark in building its transport network to promote its goods and thus developed in trading, which made her as a self-sufficiency in its economy. In the other hand, European roads were centuries ahead to the rest of the world in the wake of Roman Empire. If we consider trade as a heart of economy, transport network is its way. Chinese Silk Road glorified China's economy since it significantly helped China to have trade with its neighboring countries starting from Beijing to eastern part of Europe which covered various countries such as India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, etc. Another significant invention that has to be discussed about is Grand Canal Trading Road. This is the most uh, largest and longest fluvial navigation canal which contributed Chinese empire to leave its footprint in trading. Though it was laid in southeast coastal line of its own country, that is from Beijing to Hanzhou, connecting from four of its rivers, Yellow, Huai, Yangtze and Guangtung rivers, it has transported its goods at the cheapest possible cost. When coming to the European inventions, Arches were one of the most predominant inventions that had left by the Europeans to the Romans, which revolutionized bridge building techniques that succeeded to build most sophisticated bridge constructions of its time, especially the principle in the keystone that schematically really defines the significance of its invention. Its principle is as it is sloped downward, makes it as a flexible member to equally distribute its load from the head to the adjacent members and thus the force is dissipated safely to the substructure. The technology part of these slides will be continued by my friend Rayon. Thank you. Now during this time period, Europe and Asia were the doll centers of the legalized world. Europe followed the feudal system of government, which contained four classes, the royal family, nobles, knights, and peasants, whose social hierarchy is illustrated on the pyramid shown. In a nutshell, the peasants worked the nobles' lands, 
and the knights fought the kings and queens' battles while serving the Catholic Church. Since the road and highway systems were so sophisticated already, the laws in place were surprisingly similar to today's. Tolls were widespread in this time, and were even more ridiculously high than they are today. So much so, in fact, that they'd sometimes stifle cheap transportation needed to alleviate local famines or shortages. In this time, of course, the most common type of transportation were ships. Toll stations were also common on the rivers that these ships sailed on. The Netherlands' capital Lofstein, for example, made a killing by strategically placing itself where the rivers of moss and wild meat. 